It's the long-awaited part two of the 10 best <laughs> personal productivity and professional books. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, you have connected to the Wanderman at Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 127. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. John O'Brien, 127. We're inching up. I'm, I'm, you know, we're like well into hundreds now. It's kind of cool. 127, still yeah. working on the home studio, lighting, green screen. Matt, of course, is still in natural surroundings in beautiful Fort Myers, Florida, yeah. which which I don't know if he's ever going to leave because the pandemic is going to shut that state down eventually. You know what? It is a very <laughs> scary truth. And there, there's a lot of truth in that uh, scary statement. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, so day crazy. Day by day. You were, we were talking, I was talking to my, my clients that are in uh, my future hometown of Dunedin, Florida, and they were just talking about how horrendous it is that it's, you know, they're, their real estate has really dropped off, but there is a major issue in 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 that state specifically of the of the mask wearers yeah. and the people who are non -wear mask wearers. And I was going to ask you what is so much issues? Yeah, what's it like there? What is their general consensus in same in issue? Same thing. That Matt was talking to me offline a little bit about you know just your experience in a store of how there's just some really serious people. Yeah. The, the percentage of the people in the country are like, you're not going to take my rights away. Masks don't work. And I just, it's sad because you look around the world and this is not about getting into politics. It's just facts and science. Look around the world and look at what everybody else has done and where they're at. And I feel like we're like, what are we doing in the United States of America? Everybody's all over the place. Some people yeah. are like, you know, some, the governor in Florida is just all about, you know, whatever. You know, yeah. that just this last week, all five counties in Southwest Florida uh, did had their meetings about whether they were going to mandate masks. Every single county rejected it. So not one count, not one county in Southwest Florida is requiring mandatory mask wearing. And I think what you got is like what the Miami mayor maybe is he trying? Well, that's to do that? that's on the East Coast, and I think uh, okay. that might be different. Miami uh, date I think is a whole different thing altogether. Yeah. But in Southwest they're Florida, big they have issues it. there. They're, they're it's they're it's fascinating rules. to me, and that's why all of these retailers and everybody that uh, you know businesses have to take their own uh, uh, controlled measures to get things going. And it, that's what we were talking about yesterday offline, Jan. Right. You know that that all of these places are requiring you have to have it before you come in and they will not let people into the stores and we're talking big box stores walmart mm -hmm. uh target uh home depot not home depot uh i don't think home depot is doing that uh i think lowe's is doing that but anyway it's it's just interesting it's that it's people have to, to watch, take right it is it is it, and it is a it, to me it is a really interesting little uh uh, uh experiment on society you know yeah, what i'm saying right. and, and um you know, it, we're all too close to it right now, but years down the line, we'll yeah. be able to look back on this and, and just say, what the hell were we thinking? You were just reading my mind and, you know, we're in the middle of it and it, it's polarizing. The country's polarized. You know, we're in the middle of a big election year. It's just what, a lot happening. So what I don't, what I really don't, I really don't. And I think this is going to be the headline down the line is that the, the how on earth can help be polarizing? It's a I weird know. thing. I know. You know, this didn't have to be politicized, and it, and it was, and I'm not going to point fingers, but we all know who to point fingers at. <laughs> but the point being, it is. the point being is that um, uh, it didn't have to be that way, yeah, and man. it's just so sad. And 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 at the end of the day, a lot of people are losing their lives, and and it's not even that. Here's the thing that I think people are not are being short sighted on, and part of it is because there's not enough. Really, we don't know enough about the virus and the long-term effects of the virus because there are people that have that that don't get that, I'm gonna die. And by the way, I told you the lawnmower was gonna be coming and here it is. So, <laughs> uh, any, any, anyway, um, we don't know, but there's a lot of side effects that hang on from what I understand that could possibly hang on with you for years that are gonna be things that are gonna be- a, a, a That's a scary, right? And, and that, that is that, really you, frightening. You know where I'm scared about that is for the kids. So this, the raging drama now, right. of course, oh, is what we're, as we record this, is whether or not kids should go back to school. So you've got the, the camp that says oh, kids are, are, are 
are resilient, they're they're fine, and then you've got the groups and the doctors and the experts coming out saying, yeah, but what if there's like major long-term health, uh, lung issues and stuff for these kids that are, you know, and I've got Charlie, who I take care of, who's about to be seven in a couple months, and honestly, I, I am worried about that, you know, and then there's yeah. just no clear, it's very much a horrible thing for children with small kids who can't take care of themselves you know like at home so everybody that now so what happens when the schools open or don't open and it's you're on a week or you're in two days now now you've got that ripple effect of parents needing to have uh, find somebody to take care of their kids or do the schoolwork at home while they work i, I don't know i just think there's just so but much going on let me on. ask you a question here in collier county which is no excuse me uh charlotte county which is the county above fort myers here mm -hmm. they're man they're, they're going back to school in three weeks and the kids are all going to be given two masks and a pair of glasses or goggles right really you, yes so that's going to be their thing and it's mandatory that those kids wear those all day how in the hell is a seven-year-old kid going to be wearing a mask and goggles all day long that is that in itself is ludicrous because no kid's gonna do that because they don't even understand it. It's not, listen, do you know. like wearing a mask? How do you get a seven-year-old to wear a mask and, and goggles? I, all I don't know, the little school? kids, I think it's gotta be about having it fun and like, you know, I mean, I guess some teachers could get creative with the whole like it's superhero week or it's this and, you know, I don't know, but uh, I, 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 all I have to say about that whole thing with the kids, I agree. Everyone needs socialization for crying out loud. We yeah. need socialization. I love yeah. zoom, but it'd be nice to sit around with some friends and have a chat. True that. And the I kids mean? definitely need, this is really hurting. It's just, it's, it's but, everything. But my, from... point, but my point is everybody needs that, but you know what? I really don't think, and this, I'm not a, I am not a doctor mm -hmm. <laughs> or a psychologist mm -hmm. or a psychiatrist, but I can tell you right now, I think everyone can last a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what? That's, that, a good that's point. all we're asking about. We're not right. saying everyone shut down for five Forever. years. Yeah. It's like, take, take, yeah. take the next six months, social shut down. You know what I mean? And we will get back through this. All of this other stuff to me is just hype and BS. And it's just noise. It's, it's about health. I, and I, honestly, I, we are just prolonging the agony. I, and it, that is what is so annoying and yeah. just disruptive. Now, so we got to get off this soapbox yeah, because well, we're, I, I know. we are, we are, it, you know, because this is the challenge. You start having these conversations with people and then, you know, so then I have to find myself, I bet you do the same thing to go, all right, let's just focus on things we can control. Yeah. So you know, on, a, and, on a happier note, let me just say, let me wish a ha very happy birthday to Disneyland, which turns 65 years old today. Thank you very much. And happy birthday, happiest place on earth. Even though you're not open to celebrate. Even um, now is, did they, I thought Orlando opened or did they decide no, to close Disney it down? World. Disney World is not, I'm talking oh, about Disneyland different. in California, 65 okay. years. Disney World celebrating their 50th anniversary next year though. And of course yeah. they're open because it's, it is Florida. Because you know what? <laughs> Why the hell not? They're open. <laughs> I, I just, I, All right. Don't whatever. Now, listen, don't be ragging on my future hometown and, you know, uh, a state. And here's the deal. Georgia, where my family, the rest of my family is in Georgia. <laughs> Just to, You can cut this out if you want to. I'm not going to cut this out. The governor of oh. Georgia is suing the mayor of Atlanta over the over the mask mandate that she's trying to control in, in the the main area there in Atlanta. I, I just am like, so he's gonna make make everybody, it's against the law to wear a mask. I just like, I, what is going on in our country? I know. Uh, okay. But you know what, anyway. that's just America. And you know what, we should be happy that we are having all these conversations. It gets you back to that, right? So woo -hoo. I don't know, maybe. Woo -hoo <laughs> Well, wait, we'll either be here or we won't. Well, uh, and here's the problem. Nobody wants us anywhere. We're banned from going anywhere because we, you know we are so like infantile in the way we're dealing with I this know. pandemic. Yeah, we're stuck here. So let's make the best of it. So exactly. why don't we jump in and change the topic? And I will say uh, that amongst it all uh, here in Vegas anyway, there is definitely real estate happening. And even yeah. for my friends in Florida, it's happening. It's just got to be different in the way that you handle it. It's a little bit more restricted and people a little bit more leery there. But here we're doing pretty good. California, I don't know how real estate's going uh, there. And and I from, think what I've, from the people I've talked to, it's still moving pretty well. Down here, it's really kind of shut down from what yeah. I understand. Oh, you've said that, yeah. Yep, slow down, people are just well, being you know very what? leery. So many people, so many uh, uh, properties down here are, are uh, rental properties uh, and uh, it's off season. So yeah. it's not, it's just a weird time in Florida anyway. This is always the quiet time. Well, good, good point. And you know what? The interesting thing, though, is is there are still people having to move and things, events are happening in their lives and they're still needing to sell. Yeah. And right in the middle of all this, people are making decisions. And just within our own team, people who have listings where folks have decided that they want to be closer to their families. And yeah. So we have, for example, two listings right now where the folks are 
grandparents, they this is where they retired to, that this has made them decide they want to be closer to their family. So sure. they're moving back east, right? Thanks so we're so selling there. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. But why don't we dive into episode today is the, the continuation of five books that uh, we recommend that are on uh, my list of personal and professional development, specifically for real estate, but also for small business. So yep. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. We are, what is our episode today? 127. 127. Yeah. The show notes for the rest of the series, uh, the five more books we're going to talk about today and links to it and kind of our, our cliff notes, if you will are over at episode 127 wbnlpodcast.com. So Matt, first up on number 6 here of the of our list of 10 is the the classic Good to Great by Jim Collins. I think you read this book. Did I love you? this book. I read this book probably 20 years ago now. I or that's probably about right actually. I love this book. I always go back to it whenever I am uh, especially go, getting into a new company and talking about you know the leadership uh, philosophies this is a great book. Now, that, holds, now, and I think to me it holds up the test of time. It does and you know it's one of those it's like kind of a volume of vol what's the word I'm looking for um it's a large book. <laughs> Voluminous. Yeah. Voluminous, yeah, something like that. But it's got a lot of statistics and all this stuff into it. Great, a lot of backstories. But this is the highlight that I wanted to share. And a shout out to the reason I even know about this book, because when I was a manager with Prudential Americana Group in Las Vegas under the leadership of Mark Stark, he had all of us read this book. And we discussed it. And it was like we had a book club, you know, like a management book thing. And it was really good stuff. And we integrated some of these concepts at that time into the culture of the company right now the jim collins and he had a research team he's also written another book um and it escapes me right now uh, another one that's a very well um referenced and um oh i should look that up because yeah, I, 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 I know came out, i'm gonna look it up no i'm gonna okay you can check it out but anyway he, he they they took a set of 11 elite companies that made the leap to great results and they had sustained those results for 15 years and what you know, and they use the the stock returns, the um, how they did on the stock market, because these are publicly traded companies, as the test, the litmus test for this, and what made a company good versus great. Now, there's a there's several principles that come out in this, but the one for me that stands out a lot is the level five leadership, I and I, I see it happen all the time. And I when I when I go through this real quick, you'll immediately, if you're listening, you'll immediately go, "Oh gosh, there, I know so many people who are not level five leaders." So oh, I, really, it's the majority of people are not level. It five. really is level five leaders, and to paraphrase it in my words, are, are the people who are ambitious for the company first, not themselves. And one of the key things that I always use in my training and I, and I remember is that uh, the epitome of a level five leader is they look through the window when things are going good at the people around them to give them the thanks and the praise and the credit. Okay. And that the, and when things are not going well, they look in the mirror and they take personal responsibility. So how many people do you know even at the highest levels of government, um, without naming any names, who are the polar opposite of that. Yeah, I know. You know, and seriously, I've known so many people who it's like I take credit all the time, and if things are wrong, I'm going to blame other people. So this book really talks about the great companies have leaders who are self-sacrificing. They're about raising other people up. They they're in it for the good of the company, not themselves. In it's nutshell. absolutely. I, this particular um, uh, part of the book it, uh, is all about really, it's about coaching and building people. Like you said, it, you know what I mean? And that's one thing, you know, honestly, I can name level five leaders. Of, I have had, I have had uh, contact with in my life, maybe on one hand. And I, that's kind of sad to say, but it really is true. You know, I would consider you, Jan, a very, uh, a level five leader because and you same. are always looking for that. You know what you, I mean? You were the same. We, we learn, we work together as leaders and, right. and you recognize other, and it's to me, I always am looking for, how do I, 
uh, build people up that are because you are mind. stronger if the people behind you, not behind you, but the people around you that you surround you with are strong and on the same page and building and helping to build the company. You cannot build the company alone. And it's ridiculous to think that the people, you know, <clears throat> that the whole idea of taking credit for in someone else's work is something that has uh, been a thorn in my side all of my life. Gosh, uh, really? You know what I mean? And right. th there is, I don't know, there, but but most people getting away from that whole car part of it, but just getting back to thinking about yourself versus thinking about the company. Very few people that I have come across think that way. No, and I it's know. sad. Yeah, it, I think it really comes down to how confident somebody is. I think people who are in positions of power that don't have confidence, right, and they lack, um, you know, that whole self esteem. That's sure. how it kind of shows up. For Absolutely. Them. So that's a key piece. And there's a lot of great stuff in there. And I tell you, from reading that and studying that years ago, it's really stuck with me, and it's why it's on my list. Um, a couple other things on there: putting people in the right seat on the bus. Yeah. So first to then what? First this to is then about what? Get, get the right people. So the analogy he uses is get the right mm -hmm. people on the right seat on the bus, yeah. not just on the bus, but are they doing the right position for them? That's right. Do you have the right person doing the right, uh, you know, job title, et cetera. Um, and it, and then it's also a lot about how to motivate and manage people that way. And then the hedgehog hedgehodge concept is this simple thing that basically says, what, what do you as a company do best in the world? And don't try to do all things, you know, like focus on your hedgehog. And so they go into great detail about what is your hedgehog and what drives your economic engine in your business okay. and what, and it has to tie it always, which, which is near and dear to my heart. What are you deeply passionate about? Good to great companies focused on activities that ignited their passion. Is, yep. a, is a thing that I put in here. So that one definitely worth a listen if you're into listening, Audible. I books. love that. I love that book, and I have that on my uh, bookcase in my office. And I pull that down every once in a while. I look at parts of that. Yep. And by the way, the follow-up book to that was Built to Last. That's it. I knew it was something yeah. with built in it. Okay. Exactly. I think it was a carry-on with uh, the, the. This was the first one. Yeah, we're so talking num about yeah. number seven. Number seven is also always on my book. Uh, shelf. And it's something I've referred to over the years because I think it was the first. So the Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller, the Red Book, the first of the series of books he's written since. And I've read his books, The Shift. And I like uh, one, the one uh, principle, the, the I think it's just called One or One Concept or One Thing. It's called One Thing. That's right. Uh, that's an excellent book. And that's a little bit of a crossover business book. Now, why I'm not like, I don't ever see myself being part of the Keller Williams family. I, I do appreciate the things that are in here because it was the first real estate book where once again, he took and, and studied top producers that were teams and so forth. And of course, we like to focus on teams here. And it was very systematic and it had some good content. And I agree with a lot of the, the things that in, but not everything. But again, I take things from every everything that's in there. But it's a great book to go get some basics on. Uh, like he, he talks about the seven levels, um, the seven levels of moving your business from an individual to the top where you're sort of the CEO. And then you put all your business, which totally we, this is what our principle is at WBNL coaching mm -hmm. that you, you get yourself to a place that you replace yourself and you can get residual income, but it starts out, you have to do everything right. So it sort of ties into the e-myth, which we talked in an earlier one. Um, but the three L's are leads, listings, and leverage. Leverage is about having other people support you and help you and building the team. So I really like it. There's a lot of good stuff in that book. And it's it's almost a little bit of a, not many people have written a real estate primer, that's a real right. estate book on how to run it like a business in, a way, in an essence. Right. You know, I think that's why that book was so successful because there's not a lot of them out there like yeah, that. So, you know? Yep. So he, he interviewed, you know, mega agents and uh, I think everybody had to have earned a million or so dollars gross commission income to be in that group. And so anyway, that's the whole premise of, I think, the Keller Williams model, which is it varies on who is in charge and so on. So that's a good book. I definitely think you got to have that on your bookshelf. Switching a little bit to personal development, a personal book of mine and, and something I've studied and a lady that I've studied is uh, Byron Katie, the works of Byron Katie is loving what is four questions that can change your life. This is, this is, I had a really powerful uh, life and business coach again, when I was in Prudential that introduced me to this concept. And we actually went and we had been building a coaching uh, platform or basically a coaching idea around team building at, at Prudential. Right. So it really got a lot of my love for wanting to do teams and, and take it from those years that I work with uh, Prudential here in town. 
anyway, Kate, Byron Katie was this, this amazing story and it's very simplistic. And I use this, I mean, it's sometimes the simplest things are the most powerful things, but Absolutely. without getting into a whole session, we could do a whole podcast on just what is this loving what is in a nutshell, it's about questioning your thoughts um, that, that things that you leave unresolved cause the most stress in your life. And so there is a process and she has a very intriguing story about how she kind of hit rock bottom uh, about self-esteem and all of this. And she kind of had one of those epiphanies, a spiritual awakening and this information sort of came to her and it helped her. And she wrote a book about it. Now she coaches tons of people and, just go Google her stuff online. I have a link to one of her videos and she takes somebody through the process called the work. And it's just four questions where you go, is that true? So somebody might say something like my wife, my husband um, should stop talking to me like this or, you know, whatever. So I'm angry at this person in my life because they're doing something and they should stop doing it. So it's just a process where you walk through and go, is that true? How can it really be true? You can't be walking in that person's, you know, shoes and then you you do this turnaround because ultimately to, to to make it even simpler, it takes the concept of you project onto others whatever it is that you're going through. Yeah. So when you when you're close to in business and personal, when you're having altercations or you're you're stressed out about something in your life, it generally is something to do with you. And so it's a very amazing awakening process. And I'll just give you an example real quick. That's cool. So, so I, where this hit for me, so my coach has me read this. So I remember I'm working in this company and I remember having this conversation with them where I've been talking to him about what I was like frustrated about myself and things that I wasn't doing and in previous sessions. And anyway, he was helping me. And so I come into this session with him and he's saying, I go, I can't handle this. I'm so upset with so-and-so at our company. He, he doesn't do any work. I do all the work. He, I was one of those things. He gets all the credit. I'm so, you know, tired of, of this guy not doing what he says he's going to do. He doesn't have any integrity, blah, blah, blah. And so then he does this thing on me, these four questions, and I battled it because I wasn't going to take responsibility. And then what I, what he helped me see is that I was projecting my frustration over something I wasn't doing in my own life, which at that time, which interestingly is still the issue, taking care of myself. Um, I take care of everybody else, everything else that's on my list, and I don't stop and go work out and do the things that I need to do. It's an ongoing battle for me always. You know, I take care of myself last. And so anyway, he takes me through this process and I, and, and I go and he wants to go, you know, well, thank you to so-and-so because he's he has shown up in your life to help you look at, you know, something you're not doing. So you're projecting your not having integrity with yourself because you say you're going to do something and you're not doing it, Jan, and you're projecting that onto this other guy. So I was like, wow. So I, I was like, holy crap. Yeah. It just, it just, this book and all her work, just go check it out. It just made me realize that this is an ongoing thing we all do with the people in our lives and business. And if you, and it kind of ties into that whole take responsibility for your actions and uh, what what you're doing and it's really powerful stuff. So anyway, love yeah, that. I might, I might have to pick that one up. That's very interesting. It is, or just go watch some of her videos. So right. look at the links and see. All right, number um, number. Yeah, nine. I think we're no, no. Oh yeah, six, seven. That was eight. Sorry, that was eight. So we're up to nine. It is Man's Search for Meaning. Victor yeah. Frankel. I just love this book. This is just uh, this is the story of Dr. Victor Frankel, who was a Holocaust survivor. And he goes through this whole amazing story of how he survived in, I think he was in Auschwitz, um, about, and how he later got out and wrote this whole book about how some people made it and some didn't. And the ones who made it were able to focus on something and get outside of the situation that they were in. So you want to talk about putting some things in the whole thing. It comes down to meaning, like what is the most meaning thing in his life? And for him, it was his wife and focusing on his wife and that wanting to see her again or get through all that um, is what ha having some meaning every day allowed him to deal with all the atrocities of, of, of being in the concentration camp. Um, and and, and it, there's a quote in here that says, wow. everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's way. And it's powerful. So if you want to just like put perspective 
into what's happening for us now or at any time, go read that book. That's amazing. And, and then you will be able to just really get, you know, uh, even when you're out of control over things are out of control outside of your control, you can control your attitude and how you deal with it and, and having this deep understanding about your purpose and meaning. So I'm big into purpose and meaning. And that is like a classic book. Yeah, no, my, that's. That's, he was a, a psychiatrist and a neurologist. Okay, that's who, rather who profound, there. actually. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. But you really have to be focused to be able to get that kind of level of uh, you know mind shift that mm -hmm. he was you know going through. That's amazing. That's great stuff. And then the last one, love it. It has just come up recently, and I. It's funny. David Squire was talking about this. We were. we're David is working with us on our new uh, WBNL coaching, uh, which we're going to launch here. Very soon, folks. We keep saying that, but we're so excited. We're working really hard to get it onto the new platform. But this is Simon Sinek, and it's the, his first classic book called Start With Why. And I have a link to his TED Talk. I watched the TED Talk again. It's only like 10, 15 minutes long. Go watch this it's TED so Talk. It's so good. It's it so good. It is just brilliant. And I went through his course about, oh, goodness gracious, did probably you? About, about eight years ago. It was online. And it was really, really good. And it was all about finding your why. And it was, it was, it was, uh, it's eye opening. Anything like this, you know, if you really start getting into it, and whether you complete it or not, or, or believe in it or not, or not, you're going to pick up things along the way. And there's so many gems that Simon Sinek gives that it's, uh, just, it's, it's just, just stuff. watch the video. You don't even yeah. have to read the book, right? True. But the, it's true. but the book is, I mean, uh, how great leaders inspire action. So he, in this 15 minute Ted talk, he's talking about the golden circle. He draws three concentric circles mm. in the middle is why the next circle out is how, and then what, and he uses uh, people like Apple to describe the difference between why, uh, under Steve Jobs particularly, focused on why being their core thing. And he uses the example of not just like Dell or someone saying they, they focus on the what. We sell computers. That's why right. is Apple wanted to be the only place that people would go to you know, for this experience, right? So they, so why is the core belief of the business? It's why the business exists. The how is, how is the business going to fulfill that core belief? Then the what is, what is it? What does the company do to fill, to fulfill the core belief? Those are the, so he uses great examples. You'll get it better than I'm trying to describe it to you right now. Yeah, and then um, the, you know, so it says Cynic has found having loyal customers is all about attracting the people who share your fundamental beliefs. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. That is the premise of it all. Um, the core premise is that everyone has a why. And again, I think that was a theme throughout these books. Knowing your why, your yeah. purpose, your meaning is the key. Why do you get up in the morning? Why does your organization exist? Your why is the purpose, cause, or belief that inspires you to do what you do. When you think, act, and communicate, starting with why, you can inspire others and then have an enduring company. And that is also in the good to great, uh, yeah. key to the good to great, in my opinion, as well. Those books are very interconnected in my mind. You know what I mean? Sometimes the, the concepts are a little bit blurred because they are very, there's a lot of similarity between the, right? you know, the, you know, the direction. I so like that's it. a nice recap. And it's like, I, I looked at that when we started this a couple weeks ago and I thought, gosh, is there anything I want to swap out on my top 10? And I have to say, no, these are my no. classic it top 10 for that category of professional and personal development. But they're, but they're the ones that I have influenced me. Everybody has, you know, books. There's tons of other books I've read and, you know, but this is not a book of 20 or 30. It's just, it, it's personal also. All right. Well, if you know of, if you don't, you don't hesitate to, we have a place in the comments over at wbnlpodcast.com. If you know of some books you want to recommend, send that our way. Um, we'd love to be able to talk about that or, or maybe get another idea of something good for us to check out or for me to check out. I don't know, Matt might, Matt will be picking up one of his other favorite books on his various plane rides and such. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoy. Everybody, stay focused, stay positive. That's right. Watch this space. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that is a wrap for episode 127 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast for real estate and reality meet. You can find all of our show notes over at our really very well put together website. Thank you very much. Go to the episode vault over at WBNLpodcast.com. John O'Brien, good stuff. I'm glad we uh, uh, finished up our, our book list. I'm glad we had a little trip to Zion in between, which was kind of yes. cool. So, exactly. Yes, yes and we'll, we will... Uh... 
pick things up next week on on uh, we're definitely working on some cool things for WBNL coaching 3.0 uh, we're hoping to get launch it we've got a great idea brewing that will maybe bring david into the podcast to talk a little bit about a good idea. Good idea. uh seriously we we brainstormed something that we think for those of you listening would be impactful for this continuing stressful times you know unprecedented uh, whatever the words are you want to use we're exactly. all in it now we're exactly. all in it and it's not changing much so we're so we've got some ideas of some things we can do together that will help us get all through. We went back and looked at recently. I did the 30 day challenge that we did back in the beginning in March and things have changed since then. So sure. we're going to take that idea and talk about bulletproofing your business, a little, a little um, teaser and what you can do right now to bulletproof your business, uh, regardless of pandemic, no pandemic, um, things have changed. We're not going to go back to the way things were. <clears throat> if you're going to really survive and thrive in this business, you have, you should have already made some adjustments. If you haven't, we got some things coming up that we think are going to be very good for you to, to jump into and to get you motivated and to be with a group of people who are doing that all across the country. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm going to, let's close today with a quote from Dr. Seuss. The more that you read, the more things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. And to that, I say, be forever wandering, but not lost. Classic.